So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Akshay. Let's start with let's start with the today's today's purity this week of day 140. So let us read what the question is about, and we can think the different approaches and code we can think and code of right. So what's the name of the question? Is maximum preferred product? It's a medium gallery question. So it's a one line question. Let us read. So given an array of size, and the task is to find the maximum triple product in the array. Okay. So we have to choose such three numbers that the product of it will be maximum. Uh, if we have chosen the triplet right uh, regarding the rest of the numbers so if you can see for the first input case the three numbers chosen are 5 3 and 2 which gives us the 30. so it is very clear that if the elements are positive then you just have to take the top three uh, positive numbers top three maximum number then you have to return the product what if what what if in the case of the negative in the negative elements they have chosen minus 3 and 5 and 8 and this is that uh, 2 minus product Two minus number will give you the positive sum and it gives us 120 right so okay so let us forget about the optimization as of now suppose this question would have been asked in would have asked in an interview so what would have started with that was the brute force technique you want to find the triplet let us find the triplet with the three nested for loop and what is the constraint to find the maximum so we'll put the maximum there right so it will be nothing that the first for loop will be running from i to zero to less than n minus two while it's less than one minus two because you have a window of three you cannot take the last two numbers because last two numbers will itself be the part of the last window so i highly recommend you guys to pause this video here and uh, i've given you the intuition for the brute force it will be an n square approach and cube approach try to put it yourself i will do it too and then we will see that uh, constraint is 10 power 5 and 10 power uh, and we have put it in the cube so it will be 10 power 15 definitely get than 10 power 8 it will not get submitted but let us see let us verify the tle and then we will proceed ahead okay so just for the utilization of the time and to make this video as short as possible for you guys as well i have written the code i have not shown you the live coding of this approach because it's a very nice one right uh, there's just three nested for loops written traveling each and every uh, triplet right so you can see the nq approach gives us the tle which is definitely greater than 10 power 8 and that's the reason there right so what's the optimization we can think here so if you have if you have done this question where if I would ask you that yeah so if, if you have done this question and if I ask if I would have asked you that can you find the pair which has the maximum product in this array then what you have done that you need two integers let's say x and y and for multiplication it should be max right so definitely if the all the of the all the integers are positive then you have to find the two max elements the largest element and the second largest element and if we find in this particular array, in this particular array, it will be 8 and 3, right? This number will give you the maximum product if the positive things are considered, right? But we know that negative into negative gives us the positive, right? So we have to consider other number as well. We have to consider the negative number as well. So in the negative numbers, what should be the magnitude of this negative number and this negative number so that the product should be maximum, right? The magnitude should also be maximum, then only the product will be maximum. That means that for a negative number, B, I want negative number, I want maximum magnitude of this negative number. So that means this will be the smallest number in my array, right? Let us suppose you have this element minus two, minus one, minus three, and minus seven. All these elements are in negative numbers. And if I ask you that what's the maximum magnitude of negative number, you will say minus seven. And if you see that minus seven will be the smallest number in the whole array, right? So the, so the logic here is that to, to, to satisfy these two conditions, negative as well as the mag, uh, maximum magnitude, you need to find the smallest number. And then second, the second negative number should also have the uh, largest, right? But you cannot take the same element. So you will take the second, second smallest number, right? So if you take the smallest and second smallest number, it will be minus five, the second smallest will be minus three, right? And we have taken because we know that the negative and the negative will be positive. So, so if the question would have been, to uh, find the max, find the pair which has the maximum product, then we would have done by this way. This thing will be give us give it give me as 15, and this will be just 24, and this will this should, so this should be my answer in our test case for the pair pair maximum product. What if for the triplet? So if you if you have done this question, if you have done this question or you have understand this question now, the intuition I gave you, please pause the video here. Please pause this video here and try to think of the triplet approach, right? So I hope I hope you were able to guess it. And let's continue with the uh, triplet thing. So what we can do here is that, first of all, in this array, if we want the maximum product, let's say if all the positive numbers are there, then clearly we have to maintain three variables for let's say M1, M2, and M3. M1, M2, and M3 is the, 
the first largest, second largest, and the third largest. So it will be eight, three, and one, right? But there are negative numbers as well, and we know that negative into negative gives us the positive number. So shall we maintain three, three negative numbers here as the smallest, second smallest, and third largest? Can we do that? So let us do that, and we will see that if can we do that thing or not. So the smallest number will be the minus five, then minus three, and then minus two. But if you multiply this three numbers, it will the resultant will be negative. And you want the maximum, right? And maximum means that you already have some numbers in positive, right? And uh, eventually, this number, in before checking itself, I can say that if all the three numbers are negative, it should be negative, right? So that means the comparison we are doing is not viable here. If we eliminate one element from here, that is the third smallest element because that's have the smallest magnitude. And now, if we compare with this, this minus five and minus three will give you the negative, negative, positive. That is fifteen. Right, but you want triplet, right? So let us take one more maximum from this subarray, from this triplet of maximum, right? If you take the maximum from here, why I took the maximum because I want the maximum product. Else, else I would have taken three or one itself, right? So I'm taking 15 into it, and that gives you 120. So I hope after this point you are very clear that how to solve this question, right? Yes, you are right. You need to maintain three variables. You need to maintain three variables. That will point to the first largest, second largest, and third largest. Then you need to maintain two other more variables. Let's say min one and min two, right? And you need to return. You need to return max, or let me write it as like this. You need to return the maximum of min one star min two star m one, and then m one star m two star m three. This was the entire intuition and the logic behind this thing. How we can do this thing now? So we have to maintain the maximum, right? So let us let us make two priority queues. Let us make one max heap and let us make one min heap, right? So from the max heap, we will we will extract three elements named as m1, m2, and m3, right? And from the min heap, we will extract we will extract two elements named as min1 and min2. And then we just have to return this this thing, this thing here. So why are we using max heap? Because it ensures that you will have the elements in uh, uh, decreasing order. In the mini, it will ensure that you have the elements in, in ascending order. So to make make a max heap, what will be the time cost? So to build a heap, it is O of n. So you are, you are building a heap two times, so it will be O of n plus O of n, and you are extracting the elements five times, right? So it will be five into log n because extracting it takes log n. So but the overall time complexity will be O of n again. Space complexity will be O of two n. And since this n is ten power five, which is less than ten power, it should definitely get submitted. And this the code is very easy, right? So I will pause this video here and try to code it yourself. I will also code. Uh, I will pause this video and code it myself because there is nothing here in this approach so that I live code it for you. So let us do us let us do this together and we will resume in maybe five to six minutes from your side. So yeah, that's the code here. The priority queue max heap, right? Since the default is min heap, right? So that's so if you have to maintain a max heap, you have to mention collection dot reverse order. Then we are running a for loop, pushing each and every element of the array into max and min heap. Maintaining three variables for max one, max two, max three. Removing it from the max heap, I will I will get the three largest integers. Similarly, the two smallest integers, and I will return the max. Let us hit the submit button, and we will see for ourselves. Yeah. So that goes here. The one submission has failed because uh, I used the naive approach, the brute force technique. So that's it. So I think this space is uh, all right for my video making. Making. Right, we have discussed two approaches and it's been just nine minutes. So can we now optimize it even further? Because the expected is given as O of n and O of n and O of one. So that means there is still a way we can eliminate this space complexity. How we can do that? That while 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 using just for loop, can we can we uh, while iterating can we find the maintain the uh, track of three uh, maximum integers? Yes, we can do that. I guess. So let's say you have you will maintain m1 m2 m3 and let's say you have already as m12 and m2 as uh, what's it m1 m2 and m3 let's say you have 1 2 and 3 already stored here right and suppose the next element came as 4 right so definitely you have to update this 4 here what should be the updation 4 should come here right 1 and in the m2 in the m2 it should be okay. So M1 is the maximum element, right? So let it be three, let it be two, and let it be one, right? So that means if the if an element comes which is itself greater than M1, that is the maximum one, right? 
So you have to update this as four, right? And this three, this three will be transferred to M2, and this two will be transferred to M3, right? So if the coming integer, if the array of y is greater than M1, then what you need to do is you need to do that M3 is equals to M2, and M2 is equals to M1, and M1 is equals to array of y. Right. I hope we are clear at this point. Similarly, if the array of i, let's say I'm naming it as x, and if it is greater than m2, then what you need to do is m3 is equals to m2, and m2 is equals to x. Similarly, the, the third it will be if it's greater than just the last element, then just update the last element, right? Just update the m3, so it will be m3 is equals to x, right? Similarly, similarly for the, uh, to maintain the smallest array as well, so let's say you have min1, min1, and min2, right? And you have you have number here as one and two. And suppose the x, the current array element sum is itself less than min one. So let's say you have the another element as minus one, which itself will be less than min one, right? So what you need to do is you can clearly see that this this one minus one should be updated here, and this one should be transferred to this point. And via code wise, what you can what you can write is you can write it as min one min two is equals to min one, and then min one is equals to the current element which you are at suppose say this is x right right i am right yeah so suppose and the last step will be if suppose x is less than itself min2 right then you just have to update the min2 you do not have to affect the min1 right so you will write that min2 is equals to x right so these will be the five if conditions this will be the five if conditions now i highly recommend you to stop this video here to pause this video and give yourself five to ten minutes and code this approach because it's a very uh, the pseudo code which i've just showed you will be the exactly the solution right so let us reset the code editor and do it and i will not show you the live coding because there is no uh, very uh, complex code that's a very simple code so let us pause the video and do this together and meet in the next two five to six five to six minutes from your side right so i have coded from my side because this was a very simple code and and i'm repeating again that's why i've not seen the live code otherwise i would have i would have shown you the live coding as well so yes, so we have made two, three, uh, five variables, M1, M2, and M3, which stores the maximum. And if you have to compare with the, uh, you have to store the maximum, then you have to maintain, uh, you have to initialize with the minimum value, right? This is very clear. Uh, this is a very standard thing. Okay. Okay, so similarly, log min1, uh, we stored it with max value, that is the plus infinity. And we started the for loop, and this, these are the five if I explained you, right? The first three ifs, are for the storing the updation of our first three largest values. The, set, the last two ifs are to maintain and store the second two two smallest value, and at last we just have to return this. And if we compile and run, it will definitely run. So let us submit this solution, and then we will discuss maybe one more test case. Right. I have already uh, solved that test case, so. But still, I just wanted to give you an additional information. So definitely, it got submitted. And now the time complexity is O of n and O of 1. So what would be the summary of our today's lecture will be that we started from n cube and space complexity as 1. Then we went to O of n, right? With this post similarity O of n. Then we even optimized it to O of n with O of 1, right? So that's great. We did the three optimization. It's been just 30 minutes. So that's very great, guys. Congratulations to every one of you who have made this far. As well as there was the third case case I just I was willing to discuss with you that you may question me that Bhaiya, if all the integers are let's say negative, right? Then how this code is handling? Because this was the test case I even thought as an edge case, but uh, after observing it, I I saw that this will be automatically internally handled, right? So how is that that thing? That we were finding the first three maximum values, right? So first three maximum values will be stored in this M1, M2, and M3, right? And obviously, if all the number are in, in integers, then you just have to you just have to return the maximum uh, the maximum numbers product, right? Because the maximum numbers, uh, yeah, because the maximum numbers will have the in the number line in the number line it will be minus one, minus two, and minus three, right? And if you multiply it, will it will be still itself in the low absolute value of negative numbers, right? And the low absolute value of negative numbers is considered as the largest. In the number line, right? We can compare minus one and minus fifty-seven. The low, large, the low absolute value of a negative number is always largest, right? So that that thing will also be handled here, right? Even if you compare it with, with the min one and min two will be fifty-six into fifty-seven, you will compare it to and the minus and minus sign will be turned into positive. Then it will multiply with two m one that is minus one, 
So you will get a very huge absolute value, uh, very huge absolute negative number. So that is thing is also internally handled. If you have, if you may uh, thought of this edge case as well, so I just thought I would discuss to you. So that is it for today's video. At the end of the day, day 140. So today's question was, mm, you can say it's a medium one. If you have solved that uh, fair sum, then it would have been easy for you to understand and, and as well as code for you guys. So let us uh, talk about the last initiative that there's the Java code on the right hand side, the naive approach, then the TQ approach, and then the last thing is, is to while traversing maintain all the variables, right? Similarly, on the left hand side, the C code, the first, the second approach regarding the priority queue, and the third approach, the final optimized one, right? So, yeah, I hope it will be good for C user as well. So, let us end this video here. If you're asking that that's my DSA repository, you can start and code together with the source code because one of you was asking in the comment section to mention the code as well. So, that's not a good practice. If you want to take help, take help, but do not, do not exactly. Uh, copy and paste it try to code it yourself because then only you will learn right and thanks for showing the support to this channel we will meet again in day 141 till then bye bye take care keep learning and keep going bye